What's up everybody, Mark with Carnivox Academy, and I am excited because we are checking out Disembodied Tyrant, Synestia, Death Empress. Now, this is just a, this is a funky situation because from what I can see, they released two different singles, two separate mu music videos on the same day, possibly in the same time. Um, and it's, it's been a little weird because I've been trying to react to and, and do a vocal analysis for this, this duo. I believe these are two separate bands. Um, since they released that song Poetic Edda, uh, fe featuring Ben Dura, I believe it was. This is maybe a year or two ago. But something always came up. And even now, I'm just cursed because my body, I can tell that I'm getting sick. My voice is a little hoarse. My head feels like the size of a blimp. You know, I've got that just like muscle achiness. Um, so I'm getting this reaction in <laughs> as soon as I can. Because um, I don't know what the next couple of days are going to look like. But thankfully, you know, things are, things are going well for now. Now... If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. I am a metal vocalist of about 15 years. I think in October of this year, it'll be 15 years. And I've been doing metal vocals for a very long time in a band called Kardashev. We're on Metal Blade Records. We make music. It's cool stuff. We've been working on our, our new album. And I'm also a full-time vocal coach. Now, I'm going to keep the vocals a little bit on a minimum. I'm only going to do easy stuff today uh, because, like I said, I can feel my voice getting a little hoarse. So I'm not going to give a ton of examples like I normally do. And the examples I do give, I'm going to keep a little bit more towards like simple things. Um, but basically what I do is I work full time teaching people such as you yourself, the viewer, um, how to make all sorts of cool, crazy metal noises, things like <laughs> safely and efficiently. So you don't hurt yourself. Um, and so you can create, you know, the music you've been wanting to create for a while. Let me adjust my mic here real quick. There we go. Um, and that's it. That's all I really have. We recently, oh, by the way, we recently added a second vocal coach to the team. Her name is Verona, and she's been putting up amazing vocal analysis videos. You should definitely check them out. Um, she's covering a lot of different types of things. Um, she's focused more on like clean singing and like rock singing and things like that. So uh, super helpful. That's all I got. Um, I don't really know what to expect, but thankfully, uh, part of the nice thing about these reaction videos is you all love to tell me things in the in the comment section. So I don't have to worry too much about knowing every bit of information before I go in, because you all will tell me, and I appreciate the hard work that you do. So here we go. <laughs> Disembodied Tyrant, Synestia, Death Empress. Why did I choose this one over the other? Honestly, it came down to the thumbnail. This thumbnail just looked weird and occulty, and I like that kind of stuff. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, let's actually talk there a little bit. Let's go ahead and pause it. We're right around 48 seconds, and I usually do a pause in the 40-second era just for, I don't know, it's just luck, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> but a couple of things, interesting things I'm hearing here. So first and foremost, we're definitely hearing a very, like, fry-focused vocal right here. We're definitely hearing a vocal that there's not a whole lot of, like, false chord going on uh, in this space. Now... If you've watched this channel before, you know that I think that a lot of the time vocals are much more than just this is false chord and this is fry, right? But a lot of them, just like many different meals, have a base, right? Like if you're going to have Cajun cooking, you're probably going to have a, what is it, um, um, onion, is it onion, garlic, and, uh, uh, oh no, onion, celery, and green pepper, right? That's the base. And you're going to find that very commonly in a lot of like Cajun cooking and like cooking. And likewise, you know, with a lot of vocals, Sure, I you know I'll stand by my statement that uh, vocals tend to be more than just one thing. You know, like if I'm going to do something like that, usually gets put under the false chord umbrella. But there's much more of an arytenoidal activation. There's a little bit of false chord sound in there. Sometimes I can feel my epiglottis like popping around. I only know this because I actually saw what I was doing in a scope once. So I want you to kind of think about that about that moving forward. If you are early on in your fry learning stage and there are different ways to learn fry and you're not sounding anything like this, uh, this individual here doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It just means that oftentimes we learn the beginning sound first <coughs> or ah, 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 and then over time that builds into something else. Right. Um, we're definitely gonna be talking a lot about resonance here because this is this is like 
modern 2024 deathcore vocalization to the max, right? This is, if there was a death, most deathcore sounding vocal style that I'd heard this year, it would be this, right? And resonance and placement are what makes deathcore sound like deathcore and not death metal or anything else, right? We're going to talk about it a little bit more, keep going, but I just want you to put this in your mind that at least for the high vocals, a lot of what we're hearing is like starting as a fry bass, but it also has you know, sort of like a Will Ramosy sound where we know that there's a compression of the tissues above the vocal cords going on as well. I'm doing this because it's all twisted, right? Um, but just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that we're talking about something with a fry bass and then something else going on on top of it. And let's keep going. Okay, that's another good place to pause. That was really cool that like, so obviously we've heard that sort of stuff like before, but then they did this really glitchy like, which I didn't expect. That was really neat actually. So I'm actually kind of like, uh, I've got some, like, okay, first of all, if any of the folks uh, who are who are in these projects watch this, this, this is very impressive and this is very, very well done. Although I will say one thing I'm kind of like, eh, like wishing more is that there's so many little nuances in the nuances in the vocals, but the vocals are going so fast and there's so much going on and the synth is going as crazy as it can possibly go. Um, that it's kind of hard to pick up a lot of the stuff. Now, is that a, a failure of the song? No, absolutely not. That's that's kind of what Sith symphonic death chord does. Right. So I'm not like walking into the symphonic death core store or being upset that they're not selling something else there. It's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that um, everything happening so fast, I'm feeling like. I'm feeling like I'm missing a lot of really cool stuff that you're probably doing, but this is a good place to talk about um, resonance. I'm not going to go back because there's so much packed into one space. That it's, I'm not going to click around here for 20 minutes. It ain't happening, right? Um, <laughs> I got a kid to pick up from daycare. I got stuff to do, right? But um, there was one really interesting section and, and we're going to talk about it. He says the Lord, the word is Lord. And then we get this really tunnel-y, like chewy, like close. It's something like that, right? So let's talk about how we can do this. One thing that I've been working with a lot of my students on, um, last person I worked with this on is uh, one of my longtime students, the students out in Germany. Sivi, what's up if you see this? How you doing, man? Um, but anyway, one thing that we we do a lot that can actually hold us back with our metal vocals is practicing distortion. Now, let me explain to you what I mean. When we are utilizing distortion, right, or what I should say, we, we I should say when we are creating vocal distortion, um, one thing that can often happen is that we we learn how to do the sensation, right? Okay, so you're you're sitting there, you're watching this video, you know how to do this. You've got that part of the way, out of the way. I mean, right. But now we have to learn how to control it. And there's a lot of sensation going on in there. And that's a very distracting feeling. I often imagine like liking it to like be, imagine being in like a really like busy train car or like a really busy like club. I don't know why I'm doing this. I guess this is just my impression. Right. I don't know. Um, and somebody just gently taps your elbow. You're not going to fucking notice that. Right. Because there's so much sensation going on. So sometimes what it's good to do if you really want to excel and move a little bit faster and get a little bit more mastery in your harsh vocals is take the 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 resonance and the airflow property and everything like that and as much as we can separate it from the distortion so what do i mean by this right um <clears throat> every single cool sound i learned how to be able to do i started with clean vocals first so for example uh Mm, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just do it. So for example, with a lot of my students, I'll do this. We'll open up. I'll, I'll, I'll open this up this right here, you know, and we will go boom, boom, boom. You know, if they're a baritone like me, you know, we're going to start down here and see if, you know, a little higher, maybe G, maybe C4, right? But what we'll do is we'll just get kind of like a forward, eh, right? 
Now that's cool. Okay, great. We found forward resonance. We're done, right? Absolutely wrong. So if I just do forward resonance, that's not going to translate to harsh vocals very well and it doesn't even really sound cool as a singing voice there's not really a lot of creativity and tone going on there right if i put like a like a false chord through there since that's basically what i do right that sounds not cool it sounds like i can do the vocal and nothing else right so what I want to do is after I find that resonance, I want to play around with really echoey, really boomy mouth shapes. Now, these shouldn't cause tension in my jaw or my throat, but I'm going to go, eh, here's one. I'm just make it up out of nowhere. Eh, or maybe another one. There's one. And when I put sound through these, eh, eh, or now they sound cooler. They sound like something we would actually want to listen to. So this is something, now I don't know if this vocalist has done that, but this is something that they are very, very good at. Every like third or fourth syllable, we have a new little pocket of resonance going out. And that's an extreme level of dexterity. That's not easy to do, right? So there's a lot of mastery here. Um, there's just so much of it. I'm kind of like, Gah! you know what I mean? But let's keep going. Moody. That was really cool. Um, just want to point out one little thing here. It was super subtle, super fast. But is that Narsil back there? Ha! <laughs> did they use Narsil as their prop? I think they did. Like, yo, somebody tell me if that is, in fact, uh, uh, Narsil. It sure looks like it or something very, very similar. It doesn't look like it has the the runes on it. but And I don't know if that part is correct. Looks like Narsil. Leave me alone. Anyway, um. One thing that he did, which was really, really cool, it's actually a really cool thing you can do, um, <clears throat> is he, like, very temporarily, I don't remember the lyrics, but he very temporarily put, like, the whole sound in his nose, right? And it's, on, like, if we just describe it on paper, it's actually not that difficult to do. It's the same thing. Sung, sing, right? Oh, that makes my nose itch. Holy cow. Um, but essentially, my soft palate and my tongue, they're saying, what's up? Giving each other a little smooch. Hey, buddy, what's up? And they're closing off the vocal space. Now you can do this with your soft palate. Whoops. You can do this with your soft palate, kind of relaxing and dropping down to your tongue. Hung, hung. You can do this with your tongue, kind of more so moving up to meet the soft palate. Hung, hung, hung. That's what it feels like anyway. Um, and when we do this, especially with high vocals, it's going to really let us like sort of like a bounce between syllables really, really well and really cool when it makes sense, right? So, like, let's say I said, um, um, oh, let's, I don't know, and the gnashing of teeth, right? And the gnashing of teeth. I could say, right, I could say, mm, yeah, it's fine. I could say, and the gnashing of teeth. I could say that. Or I could say, and the gnashing, gnashing, and the gnashing. It's, I mean, I'm mispronouncing the word, but it's metal. Like, who cares? Who cares? Not me. Um, sometimes people are like, you can't even understand what they're saying. And I'm like, boo, get out of here. Not everything always has to sound fucking perfectly articulate. Sometimes we just want to sound like toilets. Stop it. Um, but yeah, and the, and the gnash, and the gnash, and the gnash. See how it creates this like really chewy, like, it creates a really too, too cool tone, and that's a lot of what I'm hearing this vocalist do. Just really skip, bop, 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 between all these different spots. Um, and that's cool because on one hand, I'm very impressed at what can be done in such a small period of time 
there is clearly this person has put clearly put thousands of hours in, of practice in. At the same time, I'm also like, well, have I seen all there is to see? Is this it? Right. If I if I hear like 45 different things in a 45 second space, like, am I going to be surprised down the road? I don't know. Um, I'm surprised by seeing Narsil here. Um, anyways, let's keep going. That was really neat. I'm just going to go back a little bit. I'm editing this video. So in that section, what you can hear is you can hear that there was a high, a high vocal. Yay, one, two, three, four, five. And there was like a slightly lower tunnel uh, layered kind of a little bit back behind that. One, two, three. Nah. Eh, eh. One, two, three, five, five. Kind of like that. That was really interesting. Not, not an uncommon practice, but it just sounded really good the way they did it there. Hello, uh, everyone. My name is Mark Garrett. This is my channel, and I would like uh, all of you to shut up for a second. That. Well, now that was something. <laughs> so I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna I'm lay it. I'm gonna lay it all out on the table. The breakdown hits, and up until this point, I'm like, I get it. It's cool. You know, it's it's there's 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 uh it's been no secret for multiple years that while I greatly enjoy deathcore, it's far from my favorite metal genre. And I was in it. I was like, dang. These people made some cool ass music. This is a very cool song, but I get it, right? I understand. Um, we're going to talk about this word here in a second, the way that it was produced. But what the hell is going on? Like, first of all, why is every single spot of this a perfect, a perfect screenshot, right? Um, but these little sounds, I, I want to listen to it. Nah, yeah, I do. I want to listen to just, just these little, what the hell?
yo, give me a whole song of that, boys. No, and I'm not trying to say I didn't enjoy the rest of it. I loved the rest of it. But like, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? It was sick as fuck is what it was. Damn. I want to know more about like the, the how they how they made that happen, like how they produced that. Right. What an interesting sound. I don't really have much to say about it past that because I, you know, I don't do any production work. I, you know, I just I just scream into microphones. That's all I do. That's all I'm worth, you know. Um, but wow, what an interesting section of the song. Now, you know, where they go with this, I don't know. That's a really good question. Are they just going to do this one cool thing and one cool song and then back to symphonic deathcore they go? Is this going to be kind of where the band takes their sound moving forward? That's my vote. But it's been a long time since Deathcore surprised me. And that was a big surprise. What a really fascinating, fascinating. Fun. And the, the way they came in, very interesting spaces, very weird spaces. Um, not like right when you anyway, I'm rambling. Let's talk vocals because that's what we're here for. But good on you. Good on you, homies. Um, so let's talk about this. This is a really perfect example of how we can think about our resonance. And I guess this is becoming a, 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 a resonance and a placement video, right? Listen to this welcome here. Listen to that. We have like, wow. Um, like we can, we can sort of, now this is just how my goofy brain works. If you don't visualize it this way, don't worry. It's fine. You don't, this is not a requirement for being a vocalist, but I see like, like, well, from this angle, it's going to look backwards to you, but like almost like two curves. Wow, come, wow, come, right, Welcome. right, and that's going to be a lot easier for you to practice if you are not using distortion. Find it, Welcome. 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 you can have kind of chew it out of the side of your mouth. You know, oh, that's interesting. Welcome. That's really neat. Um. Practice this separately. Now, here's one thing that you're probably going to run into, especially if you're doing like these really high, like more fry focused, uh, fry focused vocals is you're probably going to be quite tense. You're probably going to be quite tense in your throat and you shouldn't be and you don't need to be. This is like, listen, uh, vocal tension is what keeps people like me in business. That's what we fix, right? That's the main thing. That's the main thing we fix is like, hey, does it hurt? Hey, are you are you tense? Come on down, right? That's what we do for a living, basically. Um that's the bread and butter. Um, but what, so, okay. So what do you do about it? Okay, Mark. Cool. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be tense, but what do I do about it? Let me tell you, let me tell you what you do about it. One thing, there are many things, but one thing you can do, assuming you don't have anything else going on, assuming that you don't have, you know, some sort of like, like maybe you don't have like muscular tension dysphonia or some other thing going on. Um, if you have an otherwise, you know, let's say normal uh, vocal vocal track, what you can do is start really lazy and forward, right? So this is going to sound like is, uh, uh, there we go. Uh, uh, uh. You're going to slowly rev a motorcycle, right? Uh, 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 uh. Now, as you do that, right, you're going to smile and turn it into ah, uh, right? Uh, 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 uh. Now, the goal is not to make the sound. That's the tool that you're using, but the goal is to make that sound without your throat tightening. So we don't want it to sound like uh, wrong. Oh, we want it to sound like uh, this is something I mentioned in a lot of videos. But if you're a fan of Bioshock, which I am, although did anybody go back and play Bioshock Infinite and it kind of sucked? Did, was that just me? Did I only have that experience? Anyway, um. But, um, you know, this like, welcome to the circus of value, right? You can hear that my voice is very forward. But if I do just sort of release that risen tongue and that grimace, eh, 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 eh. some of that twang, which Verona has been talking a lot about in um, her videos up on the channel. She's been giving a lot of good insight into twang, which we use a lot in metal vocals that eh, 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 that twang goes away. But my vocal cords are still relaxed. This is imperative because if your vocal cords are squeezed, you may be able to get a cool sound, but you're going to be hurting and you're not going to like it. And you're going to message me and you're going to say, why do I gas out over one after one song? And I'll be like, let's work on it. Right. So if I have that, eh, eh, welcome, wah, wah. work the work, the like sort of goofy tunnel. Eh, 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 eh. 
I'm just messing around now. I don't even remember what he did. Um, but that's one way that you can play around with these sounds, right? Uh, last couple things I'm going to say is this is officially the coolest shot in the um, whole music video. And if you disagree, well, I don't know. Nothing will happen. Um, but this looks like something out of like a 1960s through 80s, like fantasy movie, like like a Conan the Barbarian or like a Krull, maybe like an old source and sword and sorcery movie. I love those movies. I love sword and sorcery movies. Um, in fact, like I'm going to probably make that my background, but like this lowering this this downward sounding low. Some people are going to say, I already know. Some people are going to say this is pitch shifted. Some people are going to say this is not. I'm not going to make a comment on that because I don't know. I've heard some pretty impressive things in person in my life. Um, you know, but one way that we can think about tilting down like this. Also, is this supposed to look like a cross section of a brain? Because it really does. Not that I'm like an expert on these things, but it really does kind of look like a cross section of a brain. But anyway, one way that we can tilt down is we can actually think about going forward, forward and narrow. So we stay open in the back. Ah, but we go forward and narrow. Oh, uh, I didn't do anything here. Oh, uh, right. So if I do now, I'm going to be doing a different type of distortion than you hear in here, but I'm going to do like my very typical. So I've got my tongue curled, right? I've got my tongue curled. Ah, uh, lips rounded. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to do it in steps. Right? I'm not going to... Well, okay, I'm not going to be disingenuous. There's going to be a little laryngeal movement downward here, but it's not a ton, okay? So here we go. All of... Okay, not all. Like 99% of that, which would sound dope as shit in an album especially double tracked a little eq chef's kiss most of that was just and you can hear that other, i think i shifted my pitch in the first part but i don't actually have to shift my pitch right and that's something that vocalists like this have really mastered and and they understand maybe not intuitively although a lot of them do understand this um Sometimes you meet vocalists who they're like, I don't know, I just do stuff and it sounds cool. And we all shake our fists at them. How dare you be so lucky? I was not so lucky. But then other vocal times you hear vocalists, and this is very frequent, um, who are very in tune with their voice. They're very in tune with what they're doing. They know, they really understand the system, maybe not with a bunch of academic terms, but they are they are masters of their system. And I'm leaning towards that being the, true of these vocalists or this vocalist here. Um Anyways, I'm kind of rambling at this point. Like I said, I got to go pick up my son from daycare. But this is a really cool song. I love that breakdown. I love how much we can learn resonance-wise uh, here. I never thought I would say this about a uh, deathcore song, but I think the vocals could have been turned up a little bit. I think if the vocals could have been a little bit more forward in the mix, but maybe that's just because I was trying to do vocal analysis. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm just being a little, a little baby back bitch. Um, who's to say? But it's an excellent song. It's very, very cool. Um... I really hope that 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 super cool like EDM slash trance slash Bjork Bjork sound uh, becomes a, a bigger part of their 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 soundscape. And great job. Great job. This would be insane, insane to see live. I don't know how you do that with a two two band collab, but I, I would pay. I, I would pay a pretty penny. That's all I got. I'm rambling. Um, if you enjoy the content, be sure to like, share, share. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It helps a lot. If you're interested in learning how to do safe uh, and healthy vocals, uh, hit me up, cardavoxacademy.com. Uh, we are pretty booked, but there is an e-course that'll help you get started. It's called False Chord Fundamentals. It's helped a lot of people. It's going to tell you the exact same thing I'll tell you in a lesson. Granted, it doesn't have the benefit of me like listening to your voice and responding to your voice, but it is the, the every sound I made today, it's the basis of those sounds, right? Um, also, check out the videos from Verona. She is doing an excellent job. She has already... Uh, made my life so much easier. Um, so I appreciate her hard work and she's extremely knowledgeable as well. You know, she, I would not have added somebody to the, uh, to the channel if they didn't know what they were talking about. So beyond that, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go get my kid from daycare because he's super cute and I have to, he's my son. That's, that's the rule, right? Um, many thanks. Much love. I'm out.